The signs of Hijrah began to appear, so the Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered his companions to emigrate to Yathrib, secretly to avoid the harm of the disbelievers. His companions went out secretly, fearing of Quraysh, except a man who had gone out in broad daylight, as he is not afraid of Quraysh. <laughs> وَلَأَجْرُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He is afraid only of Allah. He is a man who is not like other men. A man who doesn't fear death. It is Al-Faruq, Umar, who emigrated before all valiant of Quraysh. Come on, Harid. Come on. Our brother Ayash and Umar bin al-Khattab emigrated to al Madina. Ayash will return against his will. Ayash ibn Abi Rabi'ah was a Muslim emigrant to al Madina. His brothers followed him and began to persuade him to return with them. Ayash, your mother has vowed not to touch her head with a comb. And not to shade from the sun until seeing you. Omar refused to return Ayash to Mecca, which softened Ayash's heart, and he gave him his strong, fast she-camel. When he came back with them, they betrayed him in the middle of the road and captured him. Ayash, take me with you on your she-camel instead of my camel. Tighten him up, O Harith. Treachery is still in your blood, disbelievers? Do you want to condescend us with a religion from your innovation? You idiots? Come on! أَفَأَمِنَ الَّذِينَ مَكَرُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ اللَّهُ بِهِمُ الْأَرْضَ أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ الْعَذَابُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَوْ يَأْخُذَهُمْ فِي تَقَلُّبِهِمْ فَمَا هُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ أَوْ يَأْخُذَهُمْ عَلَى تَخَوُّفٍ فَإِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ لَرَؤُوفٌ رَّحِيمٌ The Prophet stayed in Mecca, waiting for permission to emigrate. Abu Bakr asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, more than one time for permission to emigrate. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, Be patient, may Allah make a friend for you. Abu Bakr then hopes to be this friend. After Ayash returned to Mecca, they tortured him and deprived him of water and food. And the masters of Quraysh met together to plan how to prevent the Prophet from emigrating. We will not let Muhammad migrate as he would be able to make a homeland that fights and invades us. It is time to face Muhammad and his companions. We should take from each tribe a brave young man and give each of them a sharp sword. They would gather before his house and if he goes out, they strike him as a strike of one man. Then his blood shall be divided among all tribes. Jibreel came to the Prophet and said, Don't sleep on your bed tonight. Ali ibn Abi Talib slept in the place of the Prophet and covered himself by the Prophet's garment. The Prophet said to him, They will not harm you with anything you hate from them. It is surprising that although Quraysh was hostile to the Prophet, 
but if they feared of losing something, they entrusted it with the Prophet. The reason for letting Ali in the house was to let him give everyone their things. Meanwhile, the men in front of the Prophet's door were waiting for him to get out. When the Prophet peace be upon him goes out of his house, he takes a handful of earth and throws it over their heads and he reads, And we have made before them a barrier and a barrier behind them. Then we have covered them over so they do not see. The dust covered all the heads. Then the Prophet went to his friend Abu Bakr to tell him about Allah's order. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to Abu Bakr, May Allah make a friend for you, Abu Bakr bought two camels. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, went out with Abu Bakr until they reached Thawr Cave near to Yemen. The guide was Abdullah bin Arikat, and he had not yet entered Islam. The Prophet walked into the contrary road, so Quraysh wouldn't know his way. He took a road south of Mecca to Yemen. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was very sad for leaving Mecca and said, By Allah, you are the best and most beloved land to me. Had I not been driven away by your people, I would not have left you. Asma bin Abu Bakr and her brother Abdullah delivered food and news to the Prophet and their father in the cave. O oh, Asma, I will go out next to the Kaaba to hear what they say, and when the night comes, I will go out to tell the Prophet, peace be upon him, and my father. Be careful, brother. Will Amr bin Fuhaira follow you? Yes. He'll graze the sheep in the evening, and then walk in the same direction as me to erase my footprints. May Allah help you. After that, Asma's grandfather came to ask about what her father had left to them, and he was blind, so she put stones in a bag. Is it right? Did Abu Bakr go out with Muhammad as an immigrant? Yes, Grandpa. My father went out with the Messenger of Allah. I knew that he didn't leave anything for you. No, Grandpa, he left us all this. He left you all that, so he is good. <laughs> Open the door. Open the door or I will break it. Open up, Abu Bakr's family. What do you want? Where's your father? I don't know where my father is. When they didn't find him, they put a reward for those who will find him. A great reward of 100 camels for those who bring us Muhammad and Abu Bakr, alive or dead. <laughs> the knights went out to find the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his companion, looking for the trace of the Prophet. They climbed mountains and plateaus, but in vain, until they arrived at the cave. Look at this cave. In this, Anas said of Abu Bakr, 
I was with the Prophet peace be upon him in the cave. Abu Bakr said, I raised my head and I saw the feet of the disbelievers. I said, O Prophet of Allah, if one of them looks down at his feet, he will see us. The Prophet said, What do you think, O Abu Bakr, of two the third of whom is Allah? I don't think Muhammad's here. Let's look for them somewhere else.